Good afternoon to our customers out there. And today I'm talking to uh, Steve Morton, who is our uh, head of machining technology here at Anderson Global. And what we're going to be doing today is, is talk about how Anderson uses what's called an FCS system and, and some of the benefits of that. So good afternoon, Steve. Hello, Mick. So our FCS, uh, uh, FCS clamping system is a configuration of clamping points on a plate that are used for both uh, uh, precision locators and clamping of, of parts. Uh, the main the main grid is uh, consists of a 50 millimeter grid with uh, M16 threads and counterbores of 24 millimeters. Um, Every machine in our facility has uh, starts out with a, a main table or a pallet, and we retro each machine with an FCS base plate with that same standard grid on it. Then what we'll do, uh, the, the basic building component starts with uh, um, trying to find, uh, if you had an example part, and what real estate you're working with. Um, sometimes there's a, uh, often restraints from the customer where we are or are not allowed to put FCS. So what we'll do is take that grid, transfer it to the part, and either put the FCS location in a location that uh, will be machined away or will not affect uh, the function of the final part. Okay, so that's, a, that's an important thing to point out there, I think. So you, you're saying is de depending on the product and the customer's preferences we're going to ask for potential places where we can put this fcs system and so that's a that's a back and forth dialogue with the customer as to where we can do that correct and in some cases it'll be retained in in the in the mold going forward in some cases we'll position it so it can be machined off if that's the preference correct and if the um, putting the FCS directly into the part, top side, back sides, or perimeters is often ideal, but in the cases where it's not allowed, which are several customers and parts, that is true, we'll find another way, which is uh, um, custom fixtures, still modular to the FCS, but we'll come up with rails or fixtures and or um, temp posts if the, the, the material allows for it. So one way or another, we'll get FCS into the part and to be able to machine and work hold uh, more efficiently. Okay, so let's uh, let's dive into what the actual FCS system looks like at the ground level. Uh, it all begins with uh, a standard ring, which is a 24 millimeter ring. Um, and several, so these are both precision locations and clamping um, locations. And most parts they're used for, one is usually typically an origin one is an alignment and two are just work holding clamping um, so that we can actually pinpoint one FCS location to chase it from top side to the back side and, and maintain that relativity. Next is a uh, FCS rod, which is just an M16 thread. These files are simplified, but there's threads on these rods on both ends. This end will work its way into a standard FCS component um, this is just one of many uh, FCS components. This is a 80 millimeter tall puck with uh, 16 threads on the inside. So most of the components uh, are, are built with standard heights so that they're modular and they adapt. So, so how does that puck clamp to, to the device then? What we have is our files are simplified for being lightweight for real world manufacturing, but uh, this is, there are um, patented designs in the FCS that allow for a torque wrench in a couple turns to tighten up um, those rods into these bodies. Then the, we'll go back to the example part. Um, most, most precision parts that we manufacture require multiple flips or heat treat. Um, so what they've uh, allowed us to do is work with um, often pre-hard or after-hard, we'll call rings, two different diameters. In this case, we often work with a 22 and a 24 millimeter ring for pre-hard and then after-hard. 
and or for roughing and or for finishing. So we can, every time we flip the part, we'll open it up till we finally get to the point where this ring is finished with the backside or the top side operations. Okay. That would be FCS in its very simplest form. Okay, great. So now what, what's some real world applications that you can show us? So this would be an example of a very simple mold uh, and working with our design, our cam, our machine operators, all the way through CMM. This would be a typical stack up of a part that we would get in cam. Um, and everybody's on the same page with this FCS. We know where the part is, we can simulate it, we can verify tool lengths, machine collisions, um, feature recognition. Um, what we do is have one part for data management and then double up all of the setups for each operation. We would often start with a, in this case, a customer supplied um, block of material that's been prepped for us. And then we would take this part very first op, put it in a set of vices. Uh, and in this case, this is an example of these four locations are not on our standard grid, but we found real estate in this part to put FCS in a non-standard grid. So we'll put FCS in this part temporarily. So these green surfaces are temp, temp FCS posts is what we refer to them as. So the very first operation, this part would go into a vice and off of a drawing. They would skim this part and put FCS in these locations that will temporarily um, be used on the next operation and will eventually be removed. The next operation would uh, go to the back side and go on FCS. So now we know where the part is, we know how high it is, we know, every, we know the finished stock, we trust everything about this. So now in this case, we would rough and finish this backside, including this perimeter in one operation. Um, this would be verified in the, in, in the CAM machine simulation, where this operation used to be multiple operations and we'd have to uh, uh, adjust toe clamps. And if the toe clamps were too tall or not in the right spot, we'd have program or operator conflict or run into them or not lift high enough. All of those, all those good vari variables are have been removed. We would finish this back side and then flip it over again, potentially on another machine, a different unique machine, and then mm -hmm. use FCS that we had just placed in, in the back side. Now, of course, the, the advantage that you're, you're you know, mentioning there, Steve, is when you make those kind of moves from machine to machine, it's quick, isn't it? It's very quick. The, we used to, the, the setup time used to be so, so inefficient that we used to try to do as many operations as possible on on the same machine, even if it wasn't the right machine. That was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Now with the implementation of FCS um, and the efficiency of it, we're allowed to actually um, run each operation on the appropriate machine, even if it's another setup. So in some cases we've either doubled, we've often doubled setups but we're more efficient because we're on the right machinery now. Mm -hmm. And then the risk, there also used to be high risk of moving apart. Every time it went back on the machine, it was a manual pickup with uh, um, a, a big one was transposing of numbers. Um, a lot of that, that information and, and those uh, uh, work part specific absolutes um, were uh, X, Y's and Z's four place numbers that were often transposed. Uh, either in on the setup sheets and or by the operator typing them in when the part was being picked up. A lot of that has been removed and we're more efficient. So in this case, uh, this is our second op. This would be a top side rough. Um, and these green surfaces again are temporary. Um, we would semi and finish this top side. This is a case where um, we've got perimeter keys that need to be done on a fourth axis machine or a five axis machine. So this is where it gives us lots of choices, whether a horizontal is available or we go to a five axis. But either way, this FCS has helped standardize when we're tipping and turning or coming across the, the table 
on these parts from 90 degrees often before the stack ups weren't high enough for our programmers to clear spindles with the standardization of the fcs um, all of our horizontal and five axis parts are um, are standardized for a special operation where they are minimum of 160 millimeters high which clears just about every spindle in the shop turned 90 degrees. So that's why we're representing three different setups. Temp posts, because these were used for the very first op. Those temp posts would then be removed when we finish this top side. So we used them to get here, and now yeah. they are eliminated. But in this particular case, the customer does not allow FCS on the top side but they will allow us to find the real estate to put FCS in the backside. And in some cases we will make plugs and plug them and, or in some cases we'll plug and even weld them. But what we're finding as we work with new customers, even customers that have been reluctant in the past to allow us to put any sort of feature into their, their part. Once um, they get used to um, and allow us to do this, we're finding that they, um, appreciate and like, and it helps them um, in their facilities as well as ours for setups and revisions and rework and, and what what have you. Um, another um, a pro to this is the our setup sheets have gotten much simpler. Um, oftentimes uh, in the mold pattern world, um, every every part had its own absolute that you could never lose and you had to chase that back which made our no matter where it was located on the machine um the the fcs allows us to no matter what part um, gets mounted to an fcs table it's always referenced to the top center fcs location so our setup sheet has gotten much simpler and lowered uh risk significantly on the floor <clears throat> Good, which is all helpful. Another um, pro is outsourcing. Um, we found um, we're outsourcing more and more to companies that are um, also using the FCS. We're outsourcing in the sharing of data and information and files and setup sheets. Not all companies uh, were doing things the same way, so it got complicated and high risk. We're finding when we partner with other of outsourcing facilities that also shear FCS. We're building partnerships, shearing components, um, and when when files and parts are shared uh, between the, the companies, the um, the the risk and the simplicity the risk is going down, and it's much simpler and easier than it used to be. Everybody's much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding is with this F, this base FCS, there hasn't been a third party work holding device um, that we have uh, run into yet. And we have several that we have not been able to um, um, get creative of and adapt to the FCS. So we we've, have we've, we a long laundry list of, of options for work holding, all of which have been uh, with, with the assistance of third party and or um, getting creative on our own that ha that have not been adapted to FCS, so we know where they are. Three jaw chucks, large vices, zero point clamping systems, tombstones, risers, on and on and on. Okay. And we'll carry all this information right over into uh, our simulation. Uh, this is a, an example of our Hermley C42 five axis with a small aerospace part on a uh, zero point GRD clamp with a, we've got various uh, vice jaws that uh, adapt to this. So this riser could be on uh, a lathe, it could be on a five axis machine, it could be on a vertical machine, it could be on the EDM and or five axis including CMM. When we machine this part, we know exactly where this part is, no matter what machine it's on, because it's all off of X0, Y0, Z0, top center of this FCS pallet. Um, setup sheets are simpler. When we simulate, there's no guessing. Uh, for years, our simulation was only good, only as good as the tools, the holders, 
and the part location that that we were simulating what we received from design what we simulate in cam and what was actually performed at the floor if all three worlds weren't on the same page the uh, the the risk was was high um, with the implementation of fcs design our project leaders our cam um, machine operators are all on the same page which ties us all together and simulation we can trust that is this is in the right spot and when we simulate and know that this this tool path clears we trust that it's going to clear when it's running unattended with nobody around that helps our uh, lights out machining capability presumably. correct okay um steve i want to thank you for your time i think that was a that was a good entry uh, introduction to uh, fcs and how we do it at anderson global thanks a lot thank you bye